Good morning, everyone. We welcome you in worship today at Coronado Community United Methodist. Uh, we prepare our hearts for worship with a prelude and taking in three breaths uh, representing the Holy Trinity for the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's breathe together for the Father and for the Son and for the Holy Spirit. pray. Heavenly Father, we gather this morning as your children to seek your presence and your word. May we be reminded anew in worship today of your unconditional love for us in the gift of your Son and your desire for us to be a reflection of that love, to spread that love to everyone. In your son's name we pray. Amen. We invite you to stand now as you're able. Let's join together in singing our opening hymns. Lord, we want to be a Christian.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will, we have broken your law, we have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, free us for joyful obedience, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now we have an opportunity to live out what we just sang. Let's pass it on. Pass the peace of Christ to one another. everyone peace be with you it's great to see you this morning we're so glad that you have joined us here for worship this morning we also want to welcome all those of you that are joining us online if you are ever in New Smyrna Beach we are only a half a mile from the ocean and near the corner of Peninsula and Flagler so come worship with us on a Sunday morning or uh, anytime you're in town uh, this morning, uh, we have the joy of commissioning uh, Judy Schofield, who will be heading on a mission trip this week. And so would you join me in thanking God for Judy? Um, we have had a long relationship with Saludi Paz, which is a ministry in Guatemala. They do medical work, dental work, surgery, construction, education, uh, very, very important uh, ministry in a very, very rural and poor area. We have not been able to go to Guatemala since before the pandemic. And so Judy is heading to Saludi Paz this week. Saturday. Saturday. Early. Early morning on Saturday. <laughs> No, I did not. Anyway, and so uh, Judy is heading there uh, to see how things are going and to come back and give us a report, and, uh, and we are hoping things are well and that we will be able to start sending mission teams soon. You're going to be working on a women's medical team. They put me to work as a registered nurse. Yeah. Judy is a registered nurse. She told me she didn't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't give her a microphone, and she's talking. <laughs> it's okay. Judy has a servant heart. Uh, she went with us to Cuba on our last mission trip, and uh, we are so glad to be sending her to Guatemala. You are making this possible. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your generosity, and, um, and we look forward to hearing Judy's report. She will be doing the Lunch and Learn 
in January to tell us all about her trip, and we'll probably have a little bit of update before then, but uh, it's important. So uh, let's pray. God, we thank you for siblings all around the world who know you and love you and follow you. We thank you for the chance to be partners with specific ministries, including Saluti Paz. We pray blessing over this mission trip, over the entire team, over all the uh, details of the trip, over the ministries that will happen. We pray for protection. We pray for the power of your spirit to do beautiful and mighty things. And we especially thank you and pray for Judy, who has heard your call uh, to go and to serve. Bless her and bless them all. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. We'd like to invite the ushers forward for our morning offering. God of grace and glory, we bless you and thank you for passing on to us your love and your grace and your forgiveness and your hope. We thank you for passing on to us a calling and a chance to be part of your family and part of your work in healing the world. Bless, multiply this offering that through it many may know you, many may know your love, many may know your help. We ask this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
As you are taking your seat, I would invite you to take the Bible you brought with you or one that is near you in the pew. Maybe you've got one on your phone or your tablet. Today we are going to be in two scriptures. We're going to be in John chapter 15. Yes, we were there last week. We're going to stay there a bit. John chapter 15 and 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. John chapter 15 will be about three quarters of the way through your Bible if you're using a paper Bible. There's also a table of contents. Feel free to use the table of contents. John chapter 15. And then 1 Corinthians 13 will be a little further towards the back if you're using a paper Bible. We'll be in John 15 first. John 15, then 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, today, we finish our sermon series called Wesleyan Rooted. And in this sermon series, we have been talking about the key beliefs and practices from our branch of the Christian family tree. These practices are found in other branches, but they are especially important to us. And so we've talked about grow deeply, read faithfully, embrace widely, serve impactfully. And today we are talking about love actively. Uh, the Methodist movement traces its history back to John and Charles Wesley, uh, who were alive in the 1700s in England. And uh, both of them uh, came from a long line of pastors. Their father was a pastor, both grandfathers were pastors, and they were raised in the faith by their parents and went into the family business. They studied theology at Oxford University. They were ordained in Christ Church. That's the one that was in the Harry Potter movies. And uh, so they were uh, ordained at that particular uh, college in Oxford. And uh, they founded what is called the Holy Club while they were at Oxford. And they were teased for doing this. And uh, they founded the Holy Club in 1729. John was 26 years old. Charles was several years younger than John. And they embodied grow deeply, read faithfully, embrace widely, serve impactfully. They embodied all of this. Um, they would uh, pray, they would read their Bibles, they would go to worship and communion regularly, they would fast, they would tithe. Those are often tied to grow deeply and read faithfully. And then they would go out, they would take food to poor families, they would help at the local hospital, they would visit the sick, they would visit those who were in prison, they taught orphans how to read, later they became missionaries to what was then the colonies. That sounds like embrace widely and serve impactfully. They were living out what we see in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, beginning at verse 4, Jesus said, Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by it the self, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Verse 16, You did not choose, choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Here we are today. There are still Methodists on the planet, right? <laughs> so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. Okay, we could stop right there, right? And, and do, well done, good and faithful servants, right? But look at verse 17. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. So that you may love one another. So that you may love actively. You know, in Methodism, we talk about going on to perfection or moving on to perfection. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that we come, become perfectionists. That will kill us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm a recovering perfectionist. It means being perfected in the love of God, perfected in our loving. 
It means that we are motivated by love. It means that we live in love. Grow deeply, read faithfully, embrace widely, serve impactively, love actively. We cannot forget this part of what it means to be Wesleyan rooted. Over and over and over again, it becomes a matter of the heart. It becomes a matter of what we study, what we know, what we see, what we believe, what we do, coming back to why we do it and how we do it. It is about an inner transformation. How many of you know folk who do beautiful things, but they are mean as snakes? <laughs> or they do beautiful things, and there's a hook in it. Right? They want something. Uh, when uh, John and Charles came back from America, it was a disastrous trip, by the way. Uh, they both had an experience where all of this head knowledge and hand knowledge became a living reality in their hearts. It's called Aldersgate. That was the street in which, they ha in which it happened. I love this little cartoon. It uh, has John on one side, Charles in the curly white wig on the other side. And John says, May 24th is Aldersgate Day because I felt my heart strangely warmed. And Charles says, hey, what's up with that? My heart was warmed three days earlier. And John says, look, bro, just write the songs, okay? Just write the songs. <laughs> so both, both of the brothers had, had this experience uh, in May. And, um, and, and, it's, and it's our hope that we all have this experience. That we go from following God out of fear or out of duty or habit to following God because of the love that we know and experience, the welcome that we experience, the belonging that we experience. Look with me again at John 15, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Talking about that inner transformation. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. If you, if you are a gardener or you grow fruit trees or roses or so many other plants, you know that there is a season of the year where you need to prune. You need to prune. And so in this cycle of growth in grace, there are seasons of pruning so that we can bear more fruit. Cultivating, nurturing, nourishing. And so this idea of God, what in me needs to go so that I may love more deeply, so that I may love more authentically, more truly? You know, what hook is in me that needs to go? What needs to be pruned that I may bear more fruit, fruit that will last fruit that reflects your love into the world. Now let's turn to 1 Corinthians 13. This is often called the love passage. It is, it is a favorite at weddings, but I will tell you it is also becoming a favorite at funerals, especially the entire, the entire chapter. 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to start at the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of humans and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. 
And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And now we have the list. Love is patient. How's your patience? Love is kind. How's your kindness? Love is not envious. So that means love would rejoice in the blessing of others. Love is not boastful or arrogant or rude. So that means love would be humble, that there would be healthy pride. Love is respectful and gracious and self-reflective. Love does not insist on its own way. So that means love would be collaborative. Love is not irritable. So it means love would be compassionate. Love keeps no record of wrongs. How many of us have that list in our pocket? Right. So this is about releasing resentment, forgiveness. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So I would, I would encourage you to look at these verses, 4 through 7, and insert your name in. Lisa is patient. Lisa is kind for the word love. So do it for your name. Verse 8, love never ends, right? Because God is love and God is eternal. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. There will be a time when we are perfected in love. Most of us call that heaven. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we only see a reflection as in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. God knows us and loves us right now. And God has plans for us. And now faith, hope, and love remain these three. And the greatest of these is what? Love. It is the Sunday before the election. Keep breathing. <laughs> Please vote. But isn't this what our nation needs? Our world, isn't this what we need? Steve Garnis Holmes puts it this way. In troubled times, it takes great concentration to align ourselves with grace instead of force, with love instead of fear. We begin by allowing ourselves to be loved, along with all the rest of creation. And then we fall into that love and let that love flow through us into the world. Grow deeply, 
read faithfully, embrace widely, serve impactfully, love actively. How are your words and actions different from being a follower of Jesus Christ? How is your motivation and your character, your inner life different from having Jesus in your life? It's so perfect that this particular message is coming up on a communion Sunday. We have what is called an open table. An open table means that everyone is welcome. You do not need to be a certain age. You do not need to be a member of the church. You do not need to be a Methodist. You do not need to be baptized. All are welcome and encouraged to come because this this is a meal of love. This is a meal of grace. This is a meal of hope. This is a meal of new life. It is food for the journey. And so we say thank you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of heaven and earth. We thank you for the gift of life and the gift of love. We thank you for Jesus our Lord and Savior, who delivers us from slavery to sin and shame and death and division and hate and makes with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to all who were gathered there and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to all who were gathered there and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves. If you're offering yourself for the first time or you're offering yourself again, I invite you to put your hand over your heart. We offer ourselves in praise. We offer ourselves in thanksgiving. Make us a holy and living sacrifice. Make us your love. I invite you to open your hands, take a breath. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. I invite you to join hands with someone who's near you. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ. Make us one with each other. Make us one in ministry with and for all people. And grant us an enduring faith that we may stay true to you and fruitful for you until you come again or until you welcome us home to feast at the heavenly banquet. We ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The ushers are going to make their way forward. Just in case you've not been with us when we're having communion. The folks with the gloves will hand you a little cup of juice. It is grape juice. We use grape juice instead of wine because we have folk in our congregation that are in recovery. 
and we love you, and we are proud of you. We also, uh, the children are welcome to come. So we want everybody to, everybody to be okay with that. We're trying to make the table as open and welcoming as possible. Uh, in uh, what you'll receive as the bread is nut-free, gluten-free matzah. We use that on purpose because, again, we've got folk who need that. And we love you, and we want you to have what you need and to be able to come and participate in communion. If you're seated in the pew section, you'll come towards the middle, and this way or that way. If you're seated in the chairs, you'll come towards the middle, this way or that way. I believe there is communion up in the balcony. If not, we will give it to you. There's communion for the choir. Uh, if you need to be served in your seat, just wave us down. We will come to you. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. You're welcome to eat and drink as soon as you receive the elements. There should be little holders near you for the cups. Anyone needing to be served where you're seated?
Let us pray. Holy One, our light and life, make us your love. Grow us in patience, kindness, humility, and hope. Make us and our nation places of awakening, welcome, and love for all. Help us seek the common good and find joy in what is true and right. Where there is disagreement, bring lasting understanding and peace. Where there is selfishness, bring collaboration and genuine care. May our words and actions heal wounds, extend blessings, and lift spirits wherever we go. Hear our prayer for all who feel lonely and forgotten, isolated by poverty, grief, or difference, isolated by illness or demands of caregiving. Surround them with your comforting presence and compassionate support. May they feel seen, loved, and cradled in your care. Hear our prayer for those who are exhausted, mentally, physically, or spiritually. Grant them rest, renew their strength, and remind them they are not alone. Hear our prayers for all who live in places filled with war, violence, oppression, or fear. Protect them, O God, and provide for them. May your justice and mercy break through the impasses. May your love break open the heart and vengeful hearts. Lord of all, your love never fails. Bless us in faith, hope, and love as we follow Jesus and live in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not in temptation, for thine are us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now for a few announcements. Our next Lunch and Learn will be on Thursday, November 21st in the Fellowship Hall at 1130. We'll hear from Michelle Lindsay and her work at work with at-risk students through the new Smyrna Beach Middle School Mentoring Program. Lunch will follow at 1215. The cost is $5 a person. Please register in advance through the church office during the week or today in the fellowship hall. All are welcome. Our quarterly leadership council meeting will be held Tuesday, November 19th at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. The meeting will include a presentation on generosity from Reverend Ed New from the Florida United Methodist Foundation. All are welcome. Holiday food bags. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Holiday food bag time. This year we'll provide 200 Thanksgiving food bags and 200 Christmas food bags for our neighbors in need. The bags will be distributed at our partners at New Smyrna Beach Housing. Take a card from the bulletin board and shop for the food items on the card. And return the items on Sunday, November 17th. The bulletin board is located in the courtyard on Sunday mornings and in the office during the week. Another way you can help. Take a card from the bulletin board for a volunteer opportunity sorting food or shopping for additional food. Another way you can help, donate $30 to help cover the cost of a food bag. Each food bag includes a $15 gift certificate for the family to purchase the meat of their choice. And the last way you can help is help pack the bags at the 1115th service on Sunday, November 24th. We'll follow the same process in December for the Christmas food bags. Please note the quick turnaround. 
The bulletin board will be refreshed and ready by Sunday, November 24th. Take a card, shop, and return the food items on Sunday, December 8th. Help pack the bags at the 1115th service on Sunday, December 15th. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. People will know we are Christians by our love. Let's stand as we're able and sing it together. Beloved of God, what is our mission? Building community rooted in God's love, inviting all to grow in Christ, engaging with service and compassion. Friends, we hope that you will stick around for a little while. We hope you will head into the courtyard, have something to eat, have something to drink, have a great conversation with someone, and then have another great conversation with someone else. Beloved of God, go now in peace. Go to love. Go to serve. Go with the blessing and power of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we join together now in our closing chorus. Go now in peace.
go to love actively.